You are now tuned in to Power Podcasts, the Empower Hour. Peace and blessings, beautiful souls. I am Brandy L. Bates, author of Moonshine for the Soul, The Art of Grind, and many other books. I'll be your host for tonight. You can find me on Twitter at Soledad Francis and on Instagram at Brandy is Winning. Most of these podcasts can be found archived on YouTube. Hashtag Power Podcasts, but please listen to them while they still have all of their spirit and vitality by subscribing to us on iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, and or BrandyBates.Potomatic. Red shirt, better than nothing. Student athletes become red shirts for many reasons. One example is that the student athlete may not be ready to balance the demands of both academic and athletic requirements. This speaks to the student athlete, student athlete. Red shirt, red shirt. Red shirt in United States college athletics is a delay or suspension of an athlete's participation to lengthen their period of eligibility. And so typically a student's athletic eligibility in a given sport is four seasons, right? And that aligns with the four years of academic classes typically required to earn a bachelor's degree at an American college or a university. Stay with me. So red shirting, red shirting provides the opportunity with tutoring to take some classes, become accustomed to the academic rigors demanded of them. They, they, they may also red shirt to undergo a year of practice with a team prior to participation in competition. In American college football, a student athlete may red shirt to work towards increasing size, strength, and stamina. All desirable assets for many positions as the current and post red shirt years coincide with the final phases of physical maturity. And so players may also red shirt to learn the team playbook. Many college teams run more complex formations and executions and strategies in comparison to high school teams. Okay, now apply this to your personal life and to your career, how you get the bag, how you make coin, how you make a living, your mindset, your passion, what you're passionate about. What does wealth look like to you? How much do you really need? And and no, more isn't the answer. You know, a lot of people say, I just want more money. I wanna make more money, you know? I wanna be in a bigger house. I want a nicer car. How much do you really need? Because more has no end. You'll be mooring until you die. And you'll never find contentment. So, so, so determine today, what does your dream look like? Determine what your dream life looks like and how much you need to achieve that. For what you're trying to do. What's the cost? What do you need to learn? What certifications do you need? What degrees do you need? How much money do you need? Where do you need to relocate to? Where do you need to live? What do you need to know? Who do you need to know? And then work backwards. And one day you'll wake up and realize you're not dreaming. Sometimes in your life, you need to be kept out of eligibility. This is your time, your time, your time to get your shit together. This is your time to hit the gym hard. This is your time to hit the library, get your knowledge up. Let's be honest. 
When was the last time you read a book that enriched you, that spoke to your spirit, that spoke to your soul, that got under your skin, that caused you to make a shift in your habits and your day to day? When was the last time you went for a run, did some squats, sit ups, push ups, pull ups, sweat? Stay home and cook your food from scratch. When was the last time you stayed home and cooked your food from scratch? I'm talking chop the vegetables, you know? When was the last time you drank all the water, you told yourself, and you told all of us you were gonna drink when you were at the vision board party? Talking shit and speaking your best life into existence, right? When you were writing in, you, you were writing out your, your your New Year's resolution. I'm here to tell you today, right now, this second, this minute, this hour, this day. It's better to red shirt and get your shit together than to not even be on the team. It's better to go to that community college than to skip school altogether. Because the relationships and the networks that you're going to form cannot be found elsewhere. Sometimes, sometimes, not all the time, sometimes it's better to have oatmeal than no meal. When you start taking care of yourself, I mean really taking care of yourself, you start feeling better. You start looking better. You start to attract better. It's, it all starts with you. It all starts with you. A lot of you have not found that perfect person or who you believe is the perfect match for you because you are messy as fuck. You know it. Everyone else knows it. Get your shit together first. Get your shit together. And then everything else, everything else will fall into place. I know for a fact, beyond a shadow of a doubt, we attract who we are. You attract who you are. You don't attract what you want. You don't attract what you think. You attract who you are. And even when you get your shit together, you still have to maintain and keep it tight. Keep it together. Don't be too confident when, when someone tells you they like you or they love you or they feeling you. The real question is, until when? Until when? Because if they like you because your hair is long, what happens when you cut your hair? The big chop. If they like you because your body is slapping, what happens when you gain 30 pounds? If they love you or they are in love with you or they like you because of what you are doing for them, the money you're spending on them, what happens if you get laid off, if your coin, you know, dries up? Because like seasons, people change. We are all constantly evolving, changing, growing, shrinking, learning, expanding. Tastes change, ideas change, opinions change. Nothing lasts, everything is changing. Everything is changing into something else. You have to know when to be grateful for better than nothing. It's better than nothing. You might not be in that, you know, governor style mansion, but it's better than nothing. You may not have that beach house, but you got something that's better than nothing. You may not be driving that S-Class, that Tesla, that Maybach, but what you do have is better than nothing. I need you to understand that you have no idea, no idea how much of an impact your art or your craft will have upon the masses and upon people who have not even been born yet until you actually do the work. When I found out recently 
When I found out about Toni Morrison passing, I broke down. Do you hear me? I was in shambles. Like, I didn't even, honestly, I didn't even understand it personally. To be, you know, to keep it all the way 1,000. Like, I wasn't expecting it. Like, I literally broke down and was in tears as though this was my mom or my aunt, you know, one of my cousins, one of my, you know, one of, one of the ancestors. I cried for hours. Then I pulled myself together only to go into the, go, you know, I went on to cry in the shower. Because although I had never actually met this woman, her work and her endeavors, her energy, her spirit, it stirred something within me. You follow me? There is someone listening to, somebody is listening to this right now. You hear my voice and you have no idea, no idea that the work that you're doing right now will impact millions. The shit you're into, the shit you're doing will impact billions of people. Men and women all across, all around the world. You may not see the accolades or get invited to the award shows or go on the tours. Your shit might not be on, you know, billboard or, or, or you might not be on the map yet. Or even taste and experience the royalties and mailbox money. But your legacy, your legacy will be on the tongues and in the bloodstream of souls who have not even been born yet. Can you even wrap your mind around that? Some of the world's greatest master teachers, some of the world's greatest master teachers and artists and athletes and singers and actors and actresses and thinkers and philosophers and creators and and inventors and entrepreneurs did not get to see how much of an impact their work would have. Because they may have struggled during their lifetimes. Shakespeare, Nelson Mandela, Van Gogh, Marvin Gaye, Jean-Michel Basquiat, Mozart, Beethoven. Had Prince or Michael Jackson only known what their legacy meant to so many, I don't think they would have gone out the way they did. Robin Williams, Kate Spade, Anthony Bourdain. We have to learn how to put things in a perspective. Put things in perspective. For instance, for instance, you may be a writer and you want the Stephen King, J.K. Rowling, James Patterson type of bag. But look at their catalog, right? They have put in work. You can't be on your second album. You're on your second album on SoundCloud. And all of a sudden, you brand new. You a diva. You making demands like you Madonna. Like you Christina Aguilera, right? Beyonce put in the sweat equity. Do you hear me? Do you follow me? You don't become Ralph Lauren, IBM, Microsoft, Wells Fargo, McDonald's, Starbucks, Apple, or Johnson & Johnson overnight. You need to red shirt sometimes. You need to red shirt for a few seasons and be comfortable with that. You are a reflection of what you have been telling yourself all these years because words send a frequency and energy which is then made manifest in physical form. And you can't change what's going on around you until you start changing what is going on within you. When do you start saving? Financially, the finance department. When do you start saving? And no, right after isn't the answer. There's always a reason to put it off, right? Spending is always a lot more fun than saving. I say all the time. Every time you climb in your car and you start the engine and you move your car, out of the garage or out of you know where you live you're about to spend some money 
You're going to spend some money on gas. You're going to spend some money on food. You're going to spend some money on recreation. You're going to, you are going to spend some money. Every time you climb in your car and start the ignition, you're about to spend some money. Spending is always, you know, and the way we're moving into this cashless society, this fiat currency, this cashless society, it's nothing to press a button to order something on Amazon or, you know, click a button and cash out some money over. And you're not realizing, that's why I love Dave Ramsey, because he talks about the, the envelope method of just holding your cash in your hand. So you realize, because it's a lot easier to earn the money and spend it than it is to earn the money and actually strategize and and, and plan your dollars uh, future where they're going. But spending is always a lot more fun than saving right up until it's too late. So enjoy life, enjoy life now. But put off some of the fun until later. Do you really need those new set of acrylic nails do you really need do you really really need to get your hair done every two or three weeks or can you do your hair yourself what can you do yourself do you need to go out to dinner do you need to go out to breakfast or brunch or can you you know cook that cook that food at home do you really need to buy all these new clothes or could you potentially you know go to the goodwill or you know you've got time look at the grand scheme of your life Nothing is ever as deep as you believe it is. In the grand scheme of our lives, ladies, mothers, where are my moms at? What was that pregnancy, right? Yeah, the labor was terrifying. The shit hurts. Don't get it twisted. Make zero mistakes about it. It hurts. And, and, and the labor was arduous and it was painful. But in the grand scheme, nine months of pregnancy, labor, and delivery. It was a blip on the radar in the grand scheme of the life of your child and the life of you being a mother. Trouble never lasts. But you better learn how to enjoy the ride. You better learn how to enjoy the journey. I've said it before, but it bears repeating. If your shit isn't working, get ruthless, ruthless, about doing something different. Your shit isn't working. You trying to lose weight, shit ain't popping. You gaining weight. What are you doing? And what can you do different? Right? You 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 said, you know what? I want to I want to I want to double my income. It's not popping. It's not happening for you. What do you what are you doing and what can you do different? Cuz whatever you're doing is not working. Be about the process, not the trinkets and the trophies. Because a lot of us focus on the degree. We focus on the house. We focus on the boat. We focus on the the happily ever after marriage. We focus on when I get here, I'm going to be able to do this, that, and the third. You got to be about the process. Fuck a participation award. Be about the process. Be about it. Healing isn't about changing who you are. It's about changing how you feel about who you are i want to speak to all the empaths for just one second and to the empath within you empath empath the word itself empath i'm a i'm an empath empath is derived from the greek word m as in in and pathos as in feeling the term empath it refers to a person was able to feel into the feelings of others understand your subconscious mind is 30,000 times more powerful than your conscious mind and without soul work you are you are a spirit having a human experience without soul work We can never ripen into our fullest potential. You came here for a reason. You have a very specific uh, purpose and very specific set of goals, whether you know them or not, whether they are in transition or not. But this world, the universe, this society, 
that we live in, the people at your job, at school, you name it, they will always test you. It'll always test you. It will test your beliefs and your truths. You will encounter situations that make you second guess everything. These are lessons. You know in your heart what is true. Stay in your intuition. Rest and rule in your intuition. Because I have to always remind myself like alone, alone, I can't change society for the better. Me, by myself, I, who am I? I can't bust a grape in a, in a fruit fight, right? By myself alone. But I can radically transform my own consciousness. I can radically overturn the conditioning that limits my potential, right? Your shadow is a dark omen. It's a powerful teacher. That's why I always talk about shadow work. You got to uproot and deal with the shit. Those uh, uh, generational curses. Alcoholism. Abuse. Uh, so many, so many generational things that we deal with. Your shadow is, is a teacher that reveals to you the places in your life where you are energetically blocked. And so when you continue to ignore signs, you're going to see signs in your relationships. You're going to see signs in your body, in your mind. You're going to see signs in your uh, career. You, you may even see certain patterns where uh, certain people, they may be on a job for six months and then shit starts happening. Or they're in a relationship for six months and then shit starts happening. That's your cycle. That's your program. That's your... Um, it's telling you, it's speaking to you, it's a language. And so when you continue to ignore the signs, you perpetuate the cycle of your suffering. And so genuine self-love is the most profound experience in the world, the most profound experience in the universe. Learn how to take your L's with grace. One thing about me, one thing about me is I know how to take my L's with grace. And it's okay to take your L's in public. Let people think you're having more L's than you have in wins. And take your wins in private. You don't have to announce it. See, that's the problem. We Oh, just sold, under contract. I just I just graduated. I just got this new promotion. I got, I got this new job. My baby is going, got accepted. Take your wins in private. Let people think you're losing. I promise there is a gift there for you the place where you find grace take your L's in the place where you find grace I promise there is a gift there for you absorbing the pain of others you're depriving them of, of, of a vital element of, of, of their spiritual evolution and, and karmic responsibility what do I mean Sometimes when you, you come across your friends, your family, people you know, you know they're suffering, they're struggling, they're going through it. I'm saying to you, sometimes that is their karma. And it's not always our job to fix it for our loved ones, to you know shoot them some cash, to send them some money, to fix it for them, to help them, to, yeah, listen to them, be there for them, supportive of them. But sometimes they need to go through that in order to get to the next level. And if you fix it for them, sometimes you're not helping them. You're not serving them. And speaking of karma, that karma hit different when you were already broke and struggling and or sick and or at the bottom, right? But, but going back to what I was talking about earlier, about generational curses. Uh, abuse is, is, is multi-generational. Do you know that a lot of your behaviors have been passed down to you unconsciously? Children are highly influenced by the energy of the household, including the energy of you as a parent. This means that your child, if you have children, your child will be perceptive of your moods and will feel everything that you feel, regardless of whether you want them to or not. 
And also understand you can be you you can be a medical doctor, trial attorney, clinical psychologist, PhD, real estate developer, philanthropist, venture capitalist, and still keep it trill. You can be a professional and still keep it trill. You can be a governor, a senator, a news anchorman, and still keep it trill. Trill just means true and real. In fact, in fact, keeping it trill will take you far in business and in any interpersonal relationships. But understand that, you know, everyone won't be able to keep up with that, nor will everyone respect that. There is a separate consciousness inside of you. It's sole job. The sole job of your consciousness is to keep your flesh alive. Depression, OCD, obesity, all these types of things all can be modulated. They can all be modulated because they're all housed near each other. And that speaks to what they are. An imbalance of the emotional drive with the ability of the frontal lobe to tip down some of these, you know, some of these inclinations. And it's, 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 it's instinctive. It is instinctive to eat. For some, it is instinctive to turn to the bottle. It's instinctive to be depressed. A lot of us, we do depress. We're not, we're, we're not depressed. We do depress. Look at your habits when you get up in the morning. What are you listening to? What are you focused on? What are you dialed into? Sometimes obsessive compulsion is a part of our brain. And so creating new habits, new values, getting around new personalities, adopting new paradigms, creating less triggers in your life, that is the opportunity we all have in life. Do you realize you have the ability to think down the rate of your heartbeat? You can think down the rate of your pulse. There are Buddhist monks and, and, and yogis who do this each and every day. It's all in your mind. It's all in your mind. Whatever you hold in your mind will tend to occur in your life. You continue to believe as you always have believed. You'll continue to act as you've always acted. You continue to think, you know what? It's the Republicans. It's that motherfucking Donald Trump. It's the, it's the, it's the man, right? Then you're going to continue to act the way you've always acted. You continue to surround yourself with the same group, the same people. And if they are on the bottom, guess what? That's where you remain. If you continue to act as you've always acted, you'll continue to get what you've always gotten. And so what kind of impact do you want to make on the world? That's the real question. Red shirt. What kind of impact do you want to make on the world? You have the potential to make it happen. Most people have no clear vision of their lives. Zero. Just doing shit to do shit. But that doesn't have to be your story. This is about living an extraordinary life in multiple dimensions of your reality. This is about living an extraordinary life in multiple dimensions of your being. Choose your habits carefully. Because they decide your future. Are you waking with the sun and drinking room temp lemon water? Or are you running your body into the fucking ground? You smoking cigarettes? You drinking? You turning up? Are you running laps? You hitting the gym? You juicing? Intermittent fasting? Eating vegetables? Understand your body is your avatar. Your body is your house. Your spaceship. Your temple. All in one. For your duration on this planet, in this time and space, 
Are you honoring it? I know people who honor everything and everyone but themselves and their bodies. Everything you put in your body is bullshit. And you know who you are. You know, you know you're not doing what you're supposed to do. You know you don't drink water. You don't do shit you're supposed to do. You eating, you eating McDonald's. You, you turning up. You drinking Hennessy and smoking and backwoods and blunts. And, are you honoring your temple? You have a finite amount of time to be in this body at this time, in this time and space, on this planet. Are you honoring your spaceship, your temple, your home, your avatar? Each of us, though we are spirits having a human experience, each of us requires nine types of rest. Time away, be that relationships, people, the job, school, your kids. You need a vacation, a vacation. You need time away. Permission to not be helpful. You don't always have to be the one lending a hand. Something unproductive, i.e. daydreaming, wandering, relaxation, etc. Right? Connection to art and culture. When was the last time you went to the museum? When was the last time you went to an art gallery? When was the last time you went to a a, a, a reading? Poetry reading. When was the last time? Solitude to recharge. When was the last time you meditated? When was the last time you went out in nature and were at one with nature? A break from responsibility. People get tired of always having to be strong. Always having to be on. Always having to be, you know, responsible. Stillness to decompress. Safe space, right? Safe space. And alone time at home. Somebody said, when you, you know, when you got your shit together and you living good, there's no better place to be than at home. When that, when that refrigerator is stocked, right? Your food is in the freezer. You got your music. You got your, your Netflix or your, <laughs> your, your prime video. You got you, where else would you want to be? Right? But you exist in time. You exist in time, but you belong to eternity. Everything that you are emerged from what you were taught in early childhood. How do I know this? Your religion, your culture and customs. We are all caged by our cultural programming. Don't put words to things you don't want to encourage the momentum of. Don't put words to things you do not want to encourage the momentum of. What are you engaging? What are you encouraging? Anyone who is not on your same evolutionary and spiritual frequency will distance him or herself from you, right? While all those who are on the same evolutionary and spiritual frequency as you will come closer to you. What are you entertaining? Who are you entertaining? Dr. Seuss said, those who mind don't matter. And those who matter don't mind. Everyone who needs to be by your side will ultimately appear in your life in the most spontaneous and divine ways. Guaranteed. Thought can change your heartbeat. You realize thought, the way you think can change. How you think can change your heartbeat? Why wouldn't we believe that that, that thought can change those subcortical structures about anxiety and depression and, you know, bipolar and OCD and... We can think about our lives and our habits and our triggers and we can create effects inside of us. You can build anything if and when you know what you are building. 
You have to have a blueprint. You have to have a strategy. Your consciousness knows no death. Your consciousness knows no birth. It's eternal. It is only your body that 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 is born and dies. Your body is born and your body will die. Your body is aging at this very second, at this very moment. But your consciousness, the observer, the soul, the spirit, who you really are. But you are not aware of your consciousness. You are not conscious of your consciousness. Everything is energy. Your thought begins it. Your emotions amplify it. Your actions increase its momentum. God is consciousness. God is consciousness. Not just the creator, but the very source of creation itself. It is not some separate, superior, and condemning entity that many religious institutes. Where did we get that from? Fire and brimstone, right? Believing that God is something exterior from yourself, you separate yourself from the source and immediately become limited. You become a limited being. It is a force, a divine energy, a frequency that exists within you and everybody. Everybody has a purpose. Every being, every animal, every reptile, every amphibian, every bird. Get in tune with that shit. If you are still attached to your religion, your color, or the country you were born. Do you realize how small this shit is? Do you realize these are human Social constructs, borders are social constructs, race, ethnicity, national, all this shit. Somebody created this shit. Somebody created a map. Somebody created a flag and said, you're here. This is what you are. You people are Mexican. You people are Bolivian. You people are Chinese. You people are Eritrean. You people are, you know, we're all one entity. When you look down on the planet, you don't see little borders and strips and where Portugal is different from Spain and where Haiti is different from the Dominican Republic. Get in tune. Get with the winning team, right? If you are still attached to all these things, your religion, your color, the country you were born in, then you still don't even know who and what you truly are. You don't even know who you are. You don't even know what you are. If that's what you grasping on to. Stop letting people treat you like you're regular. It's not about changing who you are, but discarding who you are not. And just like your plants have to be watered, you have to be watered. By the way, you breathe. You can change the electricity in your mind. We are electric beings. The universe is a fractal. The universe is fractal. Mathematic. You are an electrical being. That's why the foods that sustain you are electric foods. Yogananda tried to tell us this. Transformation isn't sweet and bright. It is painful. A complete uprooting before becoming. Exercise. We underestimate the power and potential and potency of exercise, be that yoga, running, cardio, strength training. Exercise keeps your brain arteries open. If you're not exercising, if you're not exercising, if you're not exercising, if you're not working out, you are losing. Please believe, please, please understand, hear me. Exercise keeps your brain arteries open. It releases all those neurotrophic factors inside your brain. It's not just the plumbing that irrigates the flesh of the brain. To keep the flesh healthy, you have to irrigate it. That has to do with your brain arteries. When you exercise, it literally makes you smarter. The brain says, I'm feeling good. This is good. I like this. I'm feeling this. I 
I'm going to create a new route. I'm going to remind you that you feel good when you run. And I never thought in a million years I'd become a runner. You couldn't tell me 10 years ago that I'd be the type of woman that's lacing up some running shoes, spending two and three hundred dollars on running shoes and feel good about it. Because when those endorphins kick in, baby, <laughs> baby, what they say? What it do, baby? When those endorphins kick in, it's like Love Jones. It's a motherfucker. Do you hear me? The brain will shower itself with growth factors. That's why movement is important. It's about learning one step past where you're comfortable. Just good enough to get you to the next level. Just good enough to get you to the next level. Better than nothing. That's what learning is. Level one to level two. Level two to level three. Level three to level four. Millions of people never analyze themselves. Mentally, they are mechanical products of the factory of their environment. Preoccupied with breakfast, lunch, dinner, work, sleep, going here and there to be entertained. They don't know what they're seeking. Most people, millions of people, billions. They don't know why they, you know, never realize complete happiness or lasting satisfaction. Our ability to destroy ourselves is the exact mirror image of our ability to save ourselves. The cost of sanity in this society is a certain level of alienation. And so you have to get scarce if need be. Today, 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 today. Take a good look over your life. You might not be where you wanna be, but God damn it, you are not where you used to be. And you're a lot wiser, you're a lot stronger and better than you were 10 years ago, five years ago, 15 years ago. What you, you're you gonna be better next year. You're gonna be better in the next five years. If you, listen to what I'm telling you. What you have may not be uh, necessarily what all you want, but it's better than nothing. Stay uplifted in power and love. Thank you so much for your attention.